Howdy. I'm Mick from Bunker Tube. We're just going to do a little bit of a review on moulds, plaster moulds in in particular. So what we've got tonight is we've got some moulds from a few different companies. We're working with moulds that we use for our gaming when we're making our terrain. So we've got some castle moulds here that are made by Herstart. You can look them up online, Herstart or um, castle moulds. Uh, I use these extensively with my scenery. So what we use is uh, plaster of Paris in general just for using for scenery purposes. It does, doesn't wear as well as some plasters but it's pretty good. So um, you can buy more expensive plasters as well. We also have this art plaster which is a little stronger and you can get more uh, dental plasters and things like that. So in showing these moulds we've got the castle moulds, the Hurstart moulds and basically it's just plaster in plaster out, wait 20 minutes and you get your, your bricks out. And I've also made a few of my own moulds for uh, making those extra bases you always need for gaming. So we've made some lava looking bases as well, making our own. And there's some older moulds that I have, these ones are linker moulds. And basically the, the process with all of them are exactly the same, you pour your plaster in, you vibrate them as much as possible, screed it off, wait till they dry, pop them out. Um, with our moulds, we make a bit of scenery. So, I'll show you one of these buildings here that we've got. This one you may see in any in our uh, 40k games and some of our fantasy games. This is just a city to death uh, kit that you can get from Games Workshop, and we built it specifically to fit the Hearthstone moulds that we built. So we've got the exploding corner on the Cities of Death and the plaster mould we made. Now, all of these bricks are individual, so you've got your tiles individual, like that. So you can make anything you really like. You, the, your imagination is where you're headed with it. So that's one of the little things we can do with these moulds. And you know, everyone knows roughly what the Cities of Death size is like, and we build big buildings with those. So the next thing I want to show you is... Bruce Hurst actually puts out some um, plans on his website uh, for the castle moulds and this is one of the buildings from that mindset. So I use this for fantasy games, it's a really good line of sight blocker and gives some characters some height. So another one we got is, this is Hurst Art Bricks again, I've got some figures there to show you a bit of scale. Uh, a friend of mine painted this and made this one up. We we use it from time to time. It takes a little bit of a beating, but you can see the scale, and that's nice on the, in the middle of the table. Uh, you can go down to as simple as a couple of bricks painted up, throw some men behind it. It's a cover save. Or you can go a little bit more extravagant. We've added on this one. We've done the Hearthstone bricks again. We've added some balsa wood flooring on it, and the field grass and everything. And it's just on a piece of MDF nice and flat and that's a great little place to hide a small squad of men these things you know you, you spend the weekend cast some cast some plaster and build something so and that's pretty good so what we're doing with our game sets is we're using the bricks from the molds making up all of these um, plates just on MDF they are 6 inches by 12 inches made specifically for the gamer that's running a, a 4 foot by 6 foot table so that you can place them out. What we've done here is we've just highlighted the different colours in the in the bricks so that we can sort of determine what we're doing and what we've done is we've magnetised some uh, Christmas tree. This Christmas tree, a whole Christmas tree was bought for a dollar for gaming purposes. What we've done is we've bought the magnets that fit perfectly into the base of the, of the uh, Christmas tree fronds. So you've got these things here and we've inserted magnets into the board as well which are fairly hard to see in general and what we've done is as well as having an open courtyard we've made a line of sight blocking so you can put your figures in behind it so we've done this so that we can use this board for open terrain play and we can also use it for trees so it gives you all the options you want for gaming and, and as every gamer knows you can only have so much scenery at your disposal so making that scenery do a lot of things for each piece of scenery that you have is the best way to do it. 
And with the moulds that we have, we actually have lots of um, trays up here with all of our bits of pieces of the individual bricks that we have. I have 15 odd different moulds that I've purchased from overseas and that gives me a couple of hundred different bricks. Now you can buy fantasy bricks which is what we've shown you today. Uh, you can buy science fiction bricks which what we plan on using them for is Space Hulk, that kind of uh, scenery. Uh, Star Wars scenery as well. You can go with gothic uh, moulds and that. So we have a little bit of everything in our moulds. There's roofs, uh, Roman walls and pillars and all sorts of stuff. And um, these are the corner sections from that octagonal building that I showed you earlier. And um, we just cast, whenever we're casting, we just cast a little bit of everything and specific things that you want. And then after a while you, you build up quite a collection of bits and pieces and that's when we can just go to the shelves and pull down any box with any parts and um, build anything we think we're going to need for gameplay. But the idea with it is now, what we're finding is we have to build something that we can use in all our different game systems. So if we want to use it for 40k, fantasy, Lord of the Rings, though we don't play that one, but if you wanted to set anything up that way. And we're starting to do a little bit of um, Inquisitor, Necromunda, so you incorporate all of this into your gameplay and it just makes your games more realistic when you can put down scenery that works well with the figures. When you've paint, spent a lot of money building and painting your figures, you're let down when you put them on the table and they're on, a, on your kitchen table. So if you can build some scenery out of anything you've got, these are, this is the best way to go. And um, yeah, happy gaming. Cheers.